Hello! A little while ago I did a test of this Beta FPV uh, 2.4 micro module, did up to 100 milliwatts of power on ELRS. I waited to test this until ELRS version 2 had come out because Beta FPV had put their own version forward and I didn't really want to use that. And that worked very well. I did a, a quick video test, we went to 1.4 kilometers and the signal didn't drop below LQ of 100 all the way there and back. So today I've got something new from Beta FPV which is this. It is the 1 watt version of this which is kind of overkill by quite a margin but there are a few little differences here and also the version 2.1 is out of ELRS and I want to see if this re-enables the uh, joystick for doing things with the OLED but I'll show you what you get in the box. You get this uh, USB-C cable. Some people were complaining that the the space to actually put the USB-C cable is very small and not all cables would fit so they would supply their own cable. You get the module itself and a sort of rubber duck antenna, some basic instructions and a mini Moxon antenna which is not really colour coordinated. This is white, the module's black. So if I hold these guys up visually they look identical from that side but there is a slight difference behind. You'll notice this little bank of dip switches. This is because this has um, a backpack they call it, a Wi-Fi backpack. This is different than, than the Mimno which had a Wi-Fi backpack and that's what it uses to communicate to do firmware updates. This has a normal Wi-Fi chip in it so you could do the firm, firmware updates. This has an additional chip for backpack functions and the idea of the backpack is communicating with other devices uh, a bit like uh, VTXs and stuff. If they've got the same sort of chip in it you could wirelessly communicate with them. Um, I don't think there's there's much going on yet with that so I'm not going to concentrate about uh, the Wi-Fi backpack and that will be coming in the 500 milliwatt version as well. What I want to do is get this flashed onto 2.1, see how the little button thing works and uh, at some point take it for a fly. Not necessarily today because I don't think it's going to be any different. I'm not going to put this on 1 watt power in the same way I didn't need to put this on 500 milliwatts power. I'm not really sure what 1 watt of power will get you. As I mentioned last time if you look at the long range records on uh, Express LRS someone has flown 100 milliwatt on 2.4 using a wing and got to 35 kilometers and if you're really looking for long range you're probably using the 900 or 868 version and at 10 milliwatts on 900 uh, megahertz someone in a wing has got to 40 kilometers so range really isn't an issue and whacking up the power is really not going to get you too much I really don't believe uh, feel free to correct me even if you're talking about penetration through buildings um, that's no good if you haven't got video and if you're if you're on 2.4 then your video is likely to be on 5.8 and your video is going to cut out before 2.4 anyway so I, I don't know why it's there but it's there if you want it. Um, in order to facilitate that they've both got a fan the 1 watt version has now got a big heat sink as well to keep it cooler but um, again you won't need it. I, I think 100 milliwatts will do 99.9% .9 of everybody in the world but it's it's there. Anyway let's get this flashed and see uh, what the button does and if it works and stuff. So I've just connected to the module via the Express LRS Lua script which uses version 2. So this is must be using version 2 of some sort but normally when you get the sort of welcome page here it would tell you the version it's running on, uh, on version 2. This one just says firmware rev master Blah, blah. So I'm thinking this is maybe uh, Beta FPV's own version so I'd prefer to flash a version so I knew what it was. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, go ahead and flash it. So we've got the 210 release uh, Beta FPV 2.4 GHz. I noticed there's a special 1000 milliwatt version instead of the regular micro. Um, doing Wi-Fi binding phrase new version of the configurator hides the binding phrase and the rest is pretty much as before so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to build and flash this. Now as far as having your receivers and modules on the same version they will actually work on the same major version so anything on version 2 will connect to a version 2 but it is good practice that if you're on 210 and then other things on 
208 let's say then you know bring everything up to the same version then you're not going to ever get in any trouble but it will officially work so you can bind an earlier version of 2 with this later version of 2 we're putting on but what I'm going to do is just update all my bits and pieces given that this works let's hope so okay so successful that's that's good stuff although this looks like it's gone through perfectly I had a look at it and it doesn't seem to have updated in fact it looks like the modules not rebooting and I just went and updated the 500 milliwatt version and that was absolutely fine I just talked to the guys on discord and they said try it on USB which is a good point it's got its own USB port so let's give it a try there see if it's a little bit happier so if we flash it for a UART and our serial device is going to be I don't know let me unplug it and see what disappears aha there we go if in doubt plug it in so let's try that one see what happens Ah, that's rebooted this time, that's better. Yes, got 2.1 on it. How strange. Now also in there, I did actually try changing the dip switches. There was a, a if you have one and two on, it said this should, that's for flashing and three and fours for normal operation. So I don't know if they're needed or not. Okay, well let's turn this on and see what the button does. First, nice colours come on, and then it goes into the regular status message that was there last time. Now, what happened on the first beta FPV firmware is if you were flying and you touched the button, it would actually fail safe. Now, what happens now is if you're armed, which is that button, and you try and press the button, it doesn't it doesn't do anything you have to be unarmed before you can do anything so it can't cause any fail safes now we're unarmed even though it's not connected to the module and we press the button we come up with some menus we got packet rate tx power telem radio bind mode and update firmware um, and this is basically just what the lua script will have for you but in a way that's accessible from the back and i really do like the fact it now tells you the version number instead of just having like a hash value. That's a bit more sort of user friendly. Uh, anyway, you can see a, a little glimpse there, what you've got, I've got my packet rate of 250 Hertz at 100 milliwatt power and my telemetry is 128. And I can change any of that just by pressing the button. And if I go down to packet rate and then I press the button, I can go through the various options I've got there um, and ditto with the TX power that goes all the way up to a thousand, which I don't want. Um, Telem radio, you can change your telemetry settings there. You can put it into bind mode if you're not using a bind phrase. And you can put it into the Wi-Fi update if you're not running the Lua script. I don't know why you wouldn't want to run the Lua script, of course, because I do find the Lua script really, really friendly. And you can get just a little bit more info from it and you can do other things with the Lua script. And I should say as well that if you update the 500 milliwatt version it's exactly the same. Really nice uh, clean interface on this. Um, I'm really liking it so well done again the Express LRS guys. So I suppose the, the question of why you want the OLED is a little bit of a mystery. I quite like the fact you can just look at it at a glance and see what it's running. That's quite nice. You know, there's no possible room for misinterpretation there. The other thing I guess this would be used for is if you had a radar that didn't run Lua, which sounds like a bit of a strange thing these days, but not long ago I reviewed this radio from WFly and it very much had its own OS. Um, but it was in the weird position that you could run CRSF on it as a protocol and it has a full-size JR bay but it couldn't run Lua so you couldn't do anything with um, Express LRS if you installed it. If you installed this module in it you could fly with it because you can change all the settings there and uh, you should be good to go. At least I figure that's what the 
or one of the, the functions of the modular. Anyway, there you go. That's my quick first look and review of the Beat FPV Express LRS 1 watt micro module. Does much the same as the 500 milliwatt module, but it does have these extra dip switches, will be, which will be coming to support the backpack functions, which I haven't really looked at yet, but I suppose it's quite interesting. I will be going out and flying this, but only at 100 milliwatts, so there's, there's nothing, nothing different to see there. But yeah, I'll let you know when I'm flying it for next time and we'll see how it does. I expect it's going to be exactly the same as this one. So at the moment it's kind of like, well, which colour goes with your radio more? Anyway, I hope that little review's been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.